penalties. It took only nine minutes for West Germany to take the lead. Joel Batz in the French goal handed it to them, fumbling Andy Bremer's shot following a short free kick from Felix Magat. The ambition of France to avenge that semi-final in Seville four years earlier had been drastically threatened. Bats had been brilliant against Brazil, but he would be haunted by this error. France responded with some fine interpassing, but by the dying seconds they'd virtually given up hope. German substitute Rudi Foller scored a second goal, which was almost academic. This time, unlike in 1982, the Germans hadn't needed penalties. Diego Maradona personally earned the right to take all his glorious talents into a World Cup final. In 12 mesmeric minutes, he took Belgium's mass defence apart with all the grace of a ballet dancer and the ruthless efficiency of an executioner. It was not only two more marvellous individual goals, but his entire contribution to the game, which left Argentina looking a class superior to Belgium. Earlier in the opening match in Spain's World Cup, Belgium had played Maradona out of the game and won 1-0. He was younger then, still growing up in the game. Now he was captain of his country and a footballer of proven genius. Belgium didn't complain in defeat. Reaching the semi-final itself had been prize enough. They knew they'd been beaten by the greatest player on earth. Diego Maradona just missed out on Argentina's World Cup success of 1978. Already an international at 17, he was felt just too young to make the final...